Six Sigma ET is a new generation CFD-based simulation tool for the design and packaging of modern-day electronics. In this demonstration, the build of a blade chassis will be explored in three sections. The first simulation is a quick analysis of a printed circuit board, or PCB, in wind tunnel conditions. This will provide a thermal analysis of the layout of a PCB and allow initial heat sink selection to be carried out based on expected or typical airflow conditions without a full description of the complete system. This can be a useful test for early conceptual design tests and for cards which may be installed in a variety of card racks or different conditions. In this example, the initial layout of PCB components has been done in an Electronic Design Automation, or EDA, software package and exported as a pair of Intermediate Data Format, or IDF, files. One contains the board outline and location of the components on the board, the other a description of the components. The import uses all of the information provided in the IDF files to map the information from the EDA system into the intelligent objects used in Six Sigma ET, such as chips, resistors and capacitors. The import will also scan the library folders to see if any objects in the library match those being imported. These can be used instead of the basic information in the IDF files. In this case, there is a match for the memory board sockets on the PCB, and so those will be replaced with a fully configured memory card stored in the library. The wind tunnel is sized to reflect the install location. In this case, 1 U high, 200 mm wide, and 400 mm long. The PCB is located centrally, 5mm from the bottom. A test chamber object provides the wind tunnel conditions. In this example, there is a 1 meter per second inflow at the front and an open outlet at the rear. Clicking the Predict Temperatures icon starts the solve, during which all gridding and meshing is done automatically. Six Sigma ET uses an advanced multi-grid CFD solver to provide fast, efficient and robust solutions. During the solution phase, the user can monitor progress by viewing component temperatures as well as summary information about the numerical residuals which remain as the Navier-Stokes fluid flow equations are solved. After the solver is finished, the component temperatures can be inspected both numerically and graphically. A quick overview can be gained by plotting the surface temperatures of all the components in the system using the PCB plot menu. Clearly the CPU main processor in this model is too hot, dissipating 20 watts, a heat sink must be considered to combat this. Creating a new model version allows the original model to be kept and compared with the newer results once another solve has been completed. A 40mm square extruded fin heat sink can now be added to the CPU. Resolving the new version will again take just 10 minutes. The results clearly show the improvement in CPU temperature and the finished board design can now be stored in the library.
Now the basic layout of the PCB and heat sink selection has been completed, the second test is to configure the complete blade server. This requires the location of the PCB within an appropriately sized chassis and the addition of equipment such as disk drives. As the cooling fans are installed in the enclosure which contains the array of blade servers, this blade server is fanless and so it must also be tested in a wind tunnel. The chassis is 1U by 200mm by 500mm and has 2mm thick sides. The front and rear sides are perforated with approximately 50% open area to let air into and out of the system. The PCB created earlier can now be dragged in from the library. Two 2.5 inch disk drives are fitted in two drive bays. And as these are standard items, they can be dragged in from a library. The disk drives are represented as simple blockage to airflow, but each one adds 6 watts of heat into the model. The test chamber, or wind tunnel, again provides air at 1 metre per second for the cooling. However, this time the fans in the enclosure which will house the blade servers are mounted at the rear side and so are exhausting air from the system rather than blowing air into it. The front side is open to let air in and the other sides are set to symmetry in order to simulate the blade server installed in the centre of an array of other blade servers. After solving, the CPU surface temperature result is virtually identical to the previous result indicating that the disk drives and the rest of the chassis geometry don't have too much influence on the CPU. The blade design can now be stored in the library. The final test will be to fill a full system enclosure with 16 of the newly created blade servers to ensure the fan system will provide enough airflow. The blade center chassis contains 16 slots for blade servers along with six separate power supplies at the front for easy access. Ten powerful fans at the back of the enclosure draw cooling air through the blades and exhaust hot air at the rear of the enclosure. A number of interconnect cards are also located horizontally at the back. These cards are relatively low powered and ventilated only by air drawn in at the rear side through small holes and gaps. The saved blade model which was stored in the library can be simply dragged into the empty chassis bay slots. As each server is dragged into an empty slot, it is automatically aligned, matching the shape of the bay and the server. This model is more than 16 times larger than the blade server model alone and so will take longer to solve. Now the solution is available, it can be seen that the temperatures of the components are all below their allowable maximum. This means the blade centre provides enough airflow. Particle streamline animations can be used to display the complex flow pattern through the system. Slow moving air is drawn into the blades at the front and exhausted at high speed through the fans at the rear. In a data center, care must be taken that this high velocity, high temperature exhaust flow doesn't impact other equipment.